Hello and welcome to ADTV and today we've come down to talk you through some very simple but effective waggler fishing tactics. Now for me personally and literally thousands of people across the country, float fishing is probably where it all began and where the love for the sport was all initiated from and it goes on from there. So hopefully in this video, it's going to be a short video to talk you through the very basics if you haven't been waggler fishing before how to get set up and how to fish it effectively. So I guess the best place to start would be the actual tackle. So I'd go for a, perhaps a 12 or 13 foot float rod, a fixed ball reel, and in most scenarios, sort of five or six pound line would be good enough to catch most things in commercials nowadays. And then that moves us on to the end tackle, which is the important bit. So what we've done at Angler Direct to make it easier for you is we've put a pack together which gives you everything you need, the daily essentials of a float fishing session, all combined into one pack. So that's available online. Failing that, you can pop into any of our stores, the knowledgeable staff in there, they'll be able to get you absolutely everything you need. So when you get on the bank, you don't find that awkward situation where you forgot something. And then hopefully that'll bring you to exactly where we are now, which is on the side of the bank, ready to get set up. So I'll talk to you a little bit about how to actually set the waggler up. Now, first of all, before we do that, is, is picking the size of waggler is quite important. So what I do is basically you judge it on the conditions you're fishing and how far you're fishing. So if it's windy and you want to fish quite a long way, obviously you're going to have to fish a relatively large waggler that takes a bit more shot than, than a shorter one if you were going to fish close in on a nice still day. So once you've got the gist of where you're going to fish, pick your size of waggler accordingly so you can cast past your spot almost, just so you know if any conditions change you can still get to where you're fishing. That then goes on to the line, but that goes on to a silicon float adapter. Now the float adapter is brilliant because if the conditions do change and you now realise you need to change your float, you have to re-tackle up again, you just push it into the adapter and you can re-tackle up. And now we're on to shot in the float. Now most floats will say on them the shot that they take and there is literally loads of shotting patterns but I'll give you my favourite and the one that I'd use 90% of the time. It's a great starting point and you can go on and learn more as you start your fishing sessions. But I would use what they call a bulk and two droppers. So how we shot it is we've got two shot at the float which lock the float in place and then all the other shot are down the hook end. So probably two foot away from the hook you've got your bulk of shot and then below that is two smaller shot on the droppers. And what that is for, one it helps you to cast straight and, and further and secondly, especially on a lake like we are today, there's normally loads of little fish. This lake is exceptionally full of little fish. That just helps the, the shot, helps the bait get down to the bottom quickly, hopefully catching some bigger fish. That's what everyone's out for, isn't it? Everyone wants to catch the biggest fish and hopefully that shot and pattern's gonna help you with that. As far as hooks go, we've got hooks to nylon. on. Now you can get loads of different ones. You can get bait bands, straight hooks, quick stops, but the two that I'd say would be like straight hooks to nylon or bait bands. That's what we've got with us today. And that allows you to fish all manner of baits throughout the session to try and get the best out of it. And then that goes on nicely. So once we're all set up, we need to know where we're fishing. We need to know how deep it is. So we've got to plumb the depth. Now this is for me, one of the things that gets forgot so much with someone who's new into fishing. So plumbing the depth is really important. I'm not going to say all the time because obviously carp or other species do feed higher in the water, but the best starting point for anyone who's getting into it would be to fish on the bottom. Now the only way you're going to know that is to plumb up. So we literally hook the plummet on the bottom of the rig and we swing it out to where we're fishing. Obviously, if that float just sails under, you know you're not fishing deep enough. So you have to adjust the float, pull it up a bit, flick it out again. And we keep repeating that process until we flick it out, the plummet hits the bottom and the float sits nicely on the top. So you now know between your float at the top and your, your plummet at the bottom, that's exactly the right depth. And you know when you cast out, your bait's gonna be on the bottom, hopefully, where most of the fish are gonna be. That's a good starting point. Like I said, you're going to have to play around and learn with the fish are coming up in the water, you can shallow up. But that's for another time, perhaps. Like to start with, fish on the bottom is a great starting point. And then that probably leads me on to my final tip that I'd give you, which is baits. So first of all, we'll look at what baits. Now, it is no doubt about it that maggots catch absolutely everything. And if you just want to catch fish, 
you will not beat it. But if you want to catch them bigger fish, what we've got today is we've got some pellets, really popular in commercial fishing, and we've got some corn. Again, nice and cheap, you can grab a tin of that and it will last you a day. A tin of corn, a bag of pellets will last you ages. And it's just about trying to catch a bigger fish if the maggots do get attacked by all the little ones. So they're the baits that I'd go for. Feed them for a catapult, perhaps if, it's, if you're fishing a bit further out. If not, throw them by hand, but keep the bait going in. Feeding for me is the biggest part of fishing. The person who's gonna catch the most fish is normally the person who's got the feeding right. Some particular days they'd want a lot of bait, all at once and then leave it quiet. Other days they'd like a constant trickle of bait and drum interest and I like that approach. The noise of the bait going in and, and the falling through the water, you're just catching more fish's attention as more and more activity goes on. The more fish you can drum into the area, hopefully the more bites you're gonna get. So if you follow those tips with setting it up, plumbing it up and get your feeding right, you really should be in for a good day's fishing. So I hope that's helped. I hope it's inspired you to get there if you're new. And not only if you're new, if you've been fishing ages, get back out on the waggler because it is brilliant. It's got to be one of the top methods of fishing for excitement and just a general good day's fishing. So new or old, get out there and give this a go.